telephone system presents Telephone Time. Telephone Time with the stories of John Nesbitt. How do you do, everyone? This small Cuban flag was raced into the Olympic Stadium at St. Louis in 1904 at a time when the new Republic of Cuba was less than six years old. These pants are army surplus, Spanish-American war surplus, and they were part of the official uniform of the mailmen of Havana. When your country is new and struggling for its existence, it has to use leftovers at times, which includes old army britches. And these shoes, high and old-fashioned, pounded for 25 miles through blistering heat on the feet of a remarkably funny man. So I can't say that we're going to reenact one of the great athletic events of history. Nevertheless, these clues are going to bring us to the great hour in the life of a pint-sized mailman from Havana. His name was Felix, and he was known there as Felix the Great, and to us today as Felix the Fourth. The epic saga of Felix Carvajal begins in the square in Havana, Cuba, early in August, 1904 A.D. Señor Valdez, I have a postcard for you. Oh, fine. Why are you always running, Felix? I like to go home early, senora. Sit in the sun or take a nap. I'm lazy, I guess. Oh. And lazy people always hurry to finish their work. Here. It's from your husband. He's feeling fine. He likes his hotel. The food is good, but he misses you. What he's doing in San Luis? He went to see the new machines at the World's Fair. What else does he write? Oh, 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 about some games that I didn't understand. Here. The Olympic Games open in two weeks. Athletes from all over the world are pouring into the city. But there are no Cubanos. Oh, it's a shame. What's the Olympic Games? Well, I, I don't quite know, but I think it's some sort of international foot race. And there are no Cubanos on it. Well, maybe we have no good runners. Well, goodbye, Felix. Adios, senora. No good runners. What? Hola, Felix. No letter oh. for me? No, padre. Padre, I'd like to have your advice, Padre. Yes, my son? I want to go to the Olympic Games. <laughs> I don't blame you. i like to see them myself. Pero, Padre, I don't want to see, Padre. I want to run. Run, Padre. Run? You mean compete? I will go to San Luis and run the marathon. But can you afford it? It costs a lot of money to go to San Luis. Well, then I will borrow the money from my friends and pay back up to the race. How much is the first prize, Padre? How much? The winner gets no money, my son. Just glory. Well, then, I will share the glory with my friends and the people of Cuba. He is good, senora. Oh, he is magnificent, father. Carvajal, pride of the Havana post office, and the next Olympic champion has been running now for, for two hours, 44 minutes, and 21 seconds. I'll bet I can beat him with one leg tied behind me. <laughs> it is not the speed, stupid. What counts in the marathon is endurance. Que endurance ni que naranjas. Now, amigos, let us do our patriotic duty and sent Felix to St. Louis. Right. Put your information right in here, come on. You are buying glory for Cuba at bargain prices. Come on, come on, that's good. Come on, money here. Oh, oh, isn't this wonderful? Oh, Felix, stop a minute, stop. Do you really think you can win, Felix? I know, senor, I can win. I promise, I promise everyone I can win. I'm gonna win. <laughs> So it came to pass that Felix made his bargain. 
It was a fair exchange, for the people of Havana gave their money to finance Cuba's single Olympic entry, and Felix gave his promise that he was going to win. And with every passing day, there were more and more shareholders in his dream. The people of Cuba believed the little postman. Everybody, that is, but one. No, no, no. But, but I must have two weeks off, senor. I must. Not even a day, understand? Not a day. But, senor, think of the glory. The glory I will bring into Cuba. And to the post office? Why do you think you're going to win? Senor, I do not think. I'm going to be first. You can be sure. Go away. You annoy me. But, senor, it's only two short weeks. No. Then, then I must quit my job. Get out. You're fired. They should be collecting for old postmen who can hardly walk, instead of for a young idiot who does nothing but run. Si, sí, senor. I will send you a postcard from San Luis. Wait. Even if you get to San Luis, they will let you race. Who asked you to represent Cuba? Who gave you the permission? What official organization? the National Olympic Committee of the Republic of Cuba. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty... Good afternoon. Hola. Hola. Yes. Good news. We have collected all the money we need. Gracias, gracias. I had to quit my job. He said they won't let me run the Olympic Games. He said that I don't represent Cuba. Don't let that worry you, Felix. I sent a nice letter to San Luis. It looks... Very official. Uh, and I put a big seal on it, and I sign it. When is your boat leaving? Tomorrow morning. Hey, we better go and buy your ticket, huh? Ricardo, adios. Good luck, Feli. If you win, you will have a free breakfast here as long as you live. Two eggs and coffee. Gracias, Ricardo. <laughs> Padre, will you please pray for me? I'm sorry, my son. The Mother Church does not approve of that kind of prayer. No? No. You see, my son, there will be many runners in the race, and I'm sure all of them have asked their priests to pray for them. If we would all oblige, it would only confuse the Almighty. Should he listen to the French priest, the American priest, or to me? No. I don't think he has ever had a favorite in a race. All the runners are his sons. So it's up to you, Felix. I understand, Padre. I understand. But I let you in on a little secret. The Mother Church is always for the underdog. So you do your best. And we'll see what we can do. Gracias, Padre. Adios. Adios. Although the good father couldn't make the promise, in his heart we fear that he may have voiced a small and secret prayer. And Felix was on his way to glory with very little money and a heart filled with hope. For the first time in his young years, he left Cuba. Two days later, and we can now record the arrival of Felix in New Orleans. The reception committee was of modest size. Pardon, senorita. Yes, yeah, sugar? I'm looking how to go to St. Louis. Can you tell me where the train is? St. Louis? Why would you want to go to St. Louis? Why should anybody? I'm going to the games. Why, sugar, you don't have to go to St. Louis for that. We got all the games you want right here. Come on in and meet the boys. But, but senorita, you don't understand. I represent Cuba. Why, well, that's all right. In here, you can represent any place you please. Come on, honey. But, senorita, the race, senorita. On, the, for the race. <laughs> Tell me you don't know how to shoot craps. No, senor. <laughs> you don't know how to shoot craps. <laughs> it's easy. You shoot seven, you win. You shoot 11, you win. You shoot, well, that's practically all there is to it. When do I lose? Practically never. All right. Everybody puts in some ready money, like uh, $5. Seven. Get the idea? I win. Not this time. That was a million to one shot against you. Okay, boys. Fade me. How about you? Shoot, you're in. Read them and weep. Eleven. I win. 
senorita. I have to oh, go to San Luis. Oh, you are you, honey? <laughs> but I have to run, senorita. Let me play for you, sugar. <laughs> they call me Lucky Betty. My money, I have to go to San Luis. I have to run over there. Okay, start running. Well, what else could Felix do? Like any intelligent man, he took a bouncer's advice. And he started running. And he ran through Louisiana. He ran through Mississippi. He ran through Tennessee. And he ran through Arkansas. His pumping legs carried him through the heart of America from Baton Rouge to Natchez, from Natchez to Memphis begging his food or stealing it from the fields and the orchards. He slept in the haystacks and the barns. He got a ride now and then, but mostly he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. 600 miles. His timing was excellent, for he arrived in St. Louis, Missouri on the 30th of August, 1904, the day of the marathon race. There's something cozy and comfortable about a rainy night at home. A good friendly fire. The clock chattering merrily away. The end of another full day. And now a quiet chance to sit back and catch up on little things. I ran into Helen Walker in town today. Oh, did you? How's she been? Fine. We're playing bridge Wednesday. Good. Here. I hope the children aren't having rain where they are. Bill travels so much at night. Mm. In other years, on a night like this, young Bill would be upstairs sorting out his stamps or reading about the exploits of his favorite storybook hero. But Bill's been gone for some time now, in the service, away at college. And long before she married George and moved away, Sue would probably have spent a rainy evening exchanging bits of gossip on the phone or trying on dresses she'd soon outgrow. Yes, it's quiet, cozy, comfortable. And yet, there's something curiously missing. Ah, oh, that's it. A happy sound. The anticipation of fun. Of hearing a warm, familiar voice. Hello? Oh, hello, Sue. How are you, dear? The distance of the miles fading quickly away. This is all that was missing. Here now are cheery hearts, a sense of nearness, of rolling back the years, the glow of being remembered, of being together again. Why not bring this happy sound to someone you care for? Make that call tonight. Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. The insignia in life is not triumph, but the struggle. The main issue is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. Wait a minute. Yeah? Where's your ticket? I don't need no ticket, senor. I'm going to run the marathon. You? See? What's your name? Felix Carvajal. I represent Cuba. The next event is the broad jump. First call for the marathon race. All contestants, please report at the starting line. This is my race, senor. Please, my race. Yes, son, just hold your horses. Felix Carvajal, Cuba. Si, sí, Cubano, Cubano. Felix! Oh, 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 oh,
waiting for two days. What are you doing here? We, we are your Olympic committee. committee. Gracias, gracias. We talk later. I have to run now. This is my race. I'm going to win. We come with you. Let's take it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Attention, please. Martin Sheridan just threw the discus over 100 feet. Hey, we're going to start here, eh? Are you planning on running in those clothes? I have no other one, senor. Clothes doesn't matter. I'm going to win. You should have told me that a week ago. I'd have stayed home. <laughs> you mind if I borrow these scissors for a moment? No, go ahead. Thanks. There he is. There's our Felix. Where? I can't see him. Over there. What? Dios. What are they doing to him? What are you doing, senor? These are the only trousers I have. Take it easy, will you? It's going to be hot out there, and you're going to need some ventilation. Well, how can I go back to Cuba like this? Forget Cuba. Just worry about getting back to the finish line. Uh, gee, well... Now he is ready to run. So let's go and wish him well. Let's go. Let's go, huh? Here we are, boy. Here we are, Felix. Uh, Felix. Good luck, boy. Good luck, boy. You're going to win. You're going to win. After one lap in the stadium, you will run out into the countryside. Then back to the stadium, where you will complete one further lap and finish here. On your marks. Get set. the improbable beginning of the first Olympic marathon race ever held in the United States. A map still remains to show the tortuous 25 miles, for which nature, by the way, without being invited, provided the hottest day in the history of the games. Up the flanks of rolling hills, down dusty roads, behind that row of trees, and endlessly winding its way back to the stadium, and of course, to victory. Attention, please. After three miles, the Cuban leads. <laughs> Almost an hour of running under that wilting sun while the messages flashed to the announcer's booth. Wait a minute. Now an American has taken over the lead. The Cuban has dropped out. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was a nice dream. A very nice dream. What was wrong with him? Touch of sun? He was starved. Says he hasn't eaten for two days. Is he all right? Oh, fine. Well, that's good. Felix hadn't eaten in two days, but being an intelligent man, he ate all the way. He is the only runner in history who gained weight during a marathon race. Attention, please. Attention. The Cuban is back in the marathon race again and is now leading the field. <laughs> I thank you. Gentlemen, according to this latest report just received, the Cuban is no longer in the lead. In fact, he's no longer in the race. Seems to have disappeared. Ay, 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 where could he be? I don't know. Oh. Help! Please, please, help! Senorita, take Danny away. Don't be afraid. He can't climb up. I'm not afraid he'll climb up. 
I want to climb down. I gotta go back to the race. Everybody they leave in me, I will be last. Danny, go away! He wants to get down! What are you doing up there? Don't look at me, Senor. Come and help me, please, help me. Gracias, Senor. You go ahead first. Go ahead. Amigo, you should stop. You look sick. You better drop out, Lors. I'm done. So long, Havana. So long, Rick. 20 miles covered, the sun beating down relentlessly, half the runners wilting under the grueling punishment. Yes, the broiling sun took its toll, but it didn't bother Felix, for he and the sun were old friends. Felix, you see, liked to sweat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that amazing Cuban has taken the lead again. That's it, Felix. He's fired. Come on, Felix. Uh, 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 oh, never. Let's go, Felix. Here. Here. No deception. No deception. No deception. Come on, Felix. need is a horse to haul the blasted thing in. Well, they might as well crank it again. Lars, it looks as though this is the end of the run. Well, thanks for the buggy ride anyway. Are you all right? Sure. I can make it to the locker room from here. Thanks. Maybe he knew a shortcut, huh? Go on, Felix. You can still finish second. Second I, father. Second I. How oh, can I, father? I give my word I will be first. Second place is all right, amigo. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Go on, please. Go on. Sure, sure. We will be proud of you. And you will still have the free breakfast as long as you live. Run, amigo. I can't, father. I promise, I will, I promise. Hey! Who won? Oh, a guy by the name of Lors. Lors? Did you hear that? Lors, he said. There must be some mistake. That's the guy who was riding with us. What? Yeah. Hey, Cuba, there's been a mistake. Start running. They haven't got a winner yet. No winner. No winner yet. No. Go ahead. Oh, I think it's yet. Yes, one more last I think it's yet. Go ahead. I know it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Santissima Madre, I hate to bother you so much, but please. <laughs>
you're proud of you, Felix. You're a great little runner, Felix. You deserve to win. You're the best. The best. You hear him? The best. The best. Bravo, amigo. But, but I didn't win. <laughs> I didn't win. Remember, my son, the inscription over the gate. The important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. I wish we could tell you that Felix came in first, but Felix was fourth. Nevertheless, there is an interesting footnote to his later life, and after this announcement, I'd like to bring it to you. This is George, away from home, working in the big city. Ever get homesick, George? I sure did for a while. And the folks back home missed me too, I guess. But then I started using the telephone. In fact, before I go back to my room, I'm gonna call the folks back home right now to tell them that I got a promotion and a raise. When you're away, remember, a regular call home means so much, costs so little. When I was a very small boy in Boston, one day each year we were all allowed to go to the riverside and there we would wait to watch the Boston Marathon runners stumble into the finish line at the end of the day. Felix, I now find out, became one of the greatest distance runners of his time and his triumph arrived when he finally won the famous Boston Marathon. And there he came into the finish line in triumph with hundreds of small fry scrambling along at his heels and cheering their lungs out. He became a hero to Cuba, and they erected a splendid statue in his honor. And some practical-minded man managed to remember to give him his job back at the post office. At the great race at St. Louis, he undoubtedly was the best runner, except that he didn't get there first. Instead, he elected to become Felix IV. And now I believe we have some clues for our story to come. There was once a youth in France who hated farming and all its chores, but who forever dreamed of gold. A lottery ticket sped him 10,000 miles in search of fame and easy fortune, but at the end of his rainbow, he found only a farm pick and a shovel, and thereby won the title of Fortunatus. Until we join you again, this is John Nesbitt wishing a goodbye to you all. Join us again on Telephone Time. Until then, we remain sincerely yours, the Bell Telephone System.